Well, we're back here at courtside where we're about three minutes away from getting this men's basketball game underway. The women do lose the game to Tampa, though, 57-42. to The Tampa women were victorious over the uh, women. And now it's men's basketball. And both of these clubs have not won anything in the, in the league yet. Florida Tech is 0-1. Tampa is 0-2. Tampa's four and four overall. The Panthers are five and two. And uh, both clubs would like to get this win and uh, because this is the last conference game before the break. So we'll see. 2.25 to go and uh, we'll get the national anthem played and then we'll do the starting lineups and go from there. Schmidt's been around for a long time. Yeah, he's the coach of Tampa. And I've known him forever. He's actually after his 700th win today. He has won 699 games. If he can win today, it'll be 700 for him. And uh, that's something that Billy Mim would not want him to get. We've got a minute away and get the national anthem played and a little bit of the crowd on the other side showed up. we got a few underneath us here and we're about ready to go. Forty seconds and counting. We're about ready to get things going here. We'll uh, get the uh, national anthem play, do the starting lineups, and go from there. Okay, we're ready for the starting lineups. National Anthem has been played. And we'll get Tampa's lineup here momentarily. All right, 
Let's see who comes out first for Tampa. Number one is Alberto Marino. And he's averaging about 12 points a game. And number 13 is Vincent Biffle, averaging 12 and a half a game. And I'm not sure who that was. I think Devon Colley, 9-8 a game. And that's uh, number 21, Anthony Gamble, averaging 13 and a half a game. And their big guy, Marco Downer, averaging about four points a game. He's 6'9", 235. They're coached by Richard Schmidt. And he's been around for a long, long time. And the Tampa Bay, uh, Tampa's 4-4. Uh, four and four. Yeah, we turn the lights off and we're putting the spotlight on the Panthers. A little different lineup here tonight. Uh, well, we've had three different lineup changes in the last three games. Number 15 is Val. Valson averaging just about 10 points a game. Number 35 is Anthony Profanis averaging about 19 a game. And his stats are great. Number 21 is Monte Pupa. He is averaging about three points a game, and he's 6'8", 235. And then R.J. Coyle, the center, about 6'10", averaging almost 15 a game, and about better than nine rebounds a game. They're coached by Billy Mims in his 14th season. And we're about ready to turn the lights back on and get this thing out of the way. All right, we're looking for lights. We're not getting them yet. All right, the lights are on. And we got 20 minutes here in the first half and Tampa's in the all red, the Panthers are in the white. RJ will be jumping against Downer. That's probably, a, I'm not sure he always starts downer, but with us having 6'10 and 6'8 in there, they need somebody a little bigger because they go a little uh, smaller than that once you get past downer. They go down to 6'5 and 6. And let's see who gets the tip. And the tip is controlled by Tampa. And it's in the hands of Collie already. And the Panthers are, uh, looks so, I don't know what they're playing just yet. And they're going to shoot a long three outside and absolutely drill it. That was Gamble. Shoots 36% from the threes. We ran into a buzzsaw with Eckert shooting outstanding outside. Ball tied up. It's going to belong to the Panthers. And his Val slipped down. And uh, lucky enough to uh, get it tied up and we get the ball. So the Panthers trying to get into their offense a little bit. And what are they doing here now? They're looking at uh, the clock, I guess. I'm not sure. And Curtis Klein comes over and says a couple of words. We got 19.29 to go, and a three-pointer was made by Tampa already. Outside Perfonis for a three. He missed that. Rebound goes to RJ. Back outside, and we get another go at it. Perfonis had what he wanted. Murphy takes it up, shot up, and in. Wow. Three to two. Tampa takes it down the court in a hurry. They're going to shoot another three and got another one. Six to two, same guy. Ball knocked around and stolen away and down the court they come, take it all the way down and score it again. 
Biffle. And it's eight to two and a good start by Tampa. Panthers are uh, turning it over a couple of times and, uh, and letting some wide open threes. They get it to Murphy on the baseline. Murphy takes it in, a little jumper, and it's good. And it's eight to four. As Murphy's got all four of them. 18 minutes, 15 seconds to go in the first half, and Tampa's up eight to four. In the corner they go. They're going to shoot another three, and they're going to miss this one. Nope, they've got the bounce, and they got another three. They made three threes already. And they got 11 to four. Get it off to Monte. Back outside Murphy. Inside it goes. Ball knocked out of bounds by Tampa. It'll stay with the Panthers. 11 to four, and they've shot three threes and made all three of them. I don't know why we always run into some hot shooting threes and uh, we turn it over again. Wow. And a foul is going to be called on Perfanis. 11 to 4. Panthers down early here. 17.44 to go and Tampa is having their way already. Made three threes already. Normally speaking, I think they like to go into the paint a lot and penetrate and get it in in close, but that ain't what's happening right now. They're going to shoot another three and miss that one. Rebound coil. So they finally missed something. And Val gets bumped around a little bit. They don't call anything on that. He's outside with it. And he is getting mugged a little bit, and he don't care. Took it inside and turned it over. And they're going to shoot a three on the other end. It's no good. Rebound Murphy. So Biffle's really working on Val, and he, this time he got called for it. He, he hit two or three other times before, and they didn't get called for it. This time they did, and... Uh, Coach Schmidt's looking down on the floor. He said, I didn't see anything. 11 to four, Pampa's up by seven. 16.50 to go here. They get the ball to Murphy. Outside Val for a three. He missed it, rebound out of bounds. Tampa ball. Sixteen forty-seven to go, it's 11 to four. Tampa's got the ball and a seven-point lead. They take it into the paint and dish it off. And that ain't going to work out there for them. So they take it in again. And they turn it over. Nope, it's hit by Monte. And they're going to keep it with 12 on the shot clock. Tampa gets the ball in, 16 and a half minutes to go in the first half, they're up by seven. Shot up is no good, rebound goes to Coyle. Val's got it down the court, he takes it down, dishes it out, Murphy, Murphy on the baseline. Shot up, it's no good, tipped it up, no good, tipped it again and lose it this time and a foul on Profanis is second. That's not good. He's our leading scorer, leading three-point shooter, almost our leading free-throw shooter, and one of our best rebounders, and he's got two fouls already, so he's got to play smart the rest of the way. 11-4. to four. Tampa's still up by seven. Take it into the paint. Shot up is not good. Coyle going to the boards well early here. It's out to Murphy. Murphy's taking it all the way down and the ball knocked out of bounds. And we're taking a media timeout at 15.42 to go here in the first. It is Tampa 11, Florida Tech four. Don't forget our Platinum Panthers. That would be the Broken Barrel Tavern. 
Florida today. Hometown News, Maverick Multimedia, Mercedes-Benz Porsche Auto, and SCB Media Group. We're looking for stats to come up here and as soon as we can. And uh, Bill Jurgens is talking to uh, Curtis Klein. And I imagine there may be one of these uh, they're talking about. I'm not exactly sure. I know one thing. Our little red light doesn't go off whenever the shot clock goes out. And, and somebody don't like something. Curtis is even talking to J.C. Myros. Anyway it goes, we got the stats coming. And we'll go over those later. One thing that does bother us a little bit is Perfonis got two fouls and it belongs to Florida Tech under their own basket there. 15.42 to go in the first half. Tampa got off to a hot start. A lot of rumbling going on in my mouthpiece, and that's not me. Well, we're about ready to get things underway again. Get it off to RJ. Back it goes to Val. Val's on the baseline, and he's fouled. And the foul is going to be called on Gamble. So both teams got picked up a couple of fouls. They get it into Murphy off the glass. It's not good. Ball knocked around and Tampa's got it. Not sure they got numbers. That pull up jumper, it's good. 13 to four, it's all Tampa. By nine here early on. We've only played, uh, we haven't even played five minutes yet. Panthers uh, need to get back into Murphy for a three, and he drilled that one. That uh, came at a nice time, too. 13 to 7, 15 minutes to go. In the first. They're going to try to answer on the other end. They don't get that off, though. Panthers are in the zone now. And now they let them on the baseline. Shot up. It's not good. Rebound goes to Val, and a foul is going to be called on Biffle. So that may be the second on Biffle, it is, and they're gonna reload with, bring in number five, which is uh, Ibrahim. Okay. 14.40 to go here in the first half. It's 13 to seven, Panthers have got the ball. And a foul is going to be called on whom? 34, I think. That would be their big guy downer. So that's the fourth team foul. And it'll be Panther basketball, and they get it out to RJ back outside. They go inside, Mate's little hook shot, no good. Rebound up and in by Profanis. 13 to nine, Panthers cut that lead to four. It was 13 to four, five unanswered by the Panthers. They get it outside, they're on the baseline, dish it off, shot up, it's in there and a foul on RJ. Now they put it on Mate instead. And they give him the basket, it's 15 to nine. And the free throw is not good. And Mate runs it down. Yeah. 
Foul takes it into the paint, way out in the corner. Oh, he had it to Mate, he did not handle it. It went right through his fingers. It's a six point lead by Tampa. 13.50 to go in the first half, they've got the ball. They got a good start. Here's a long three outside. They've made four threes already. Twelve out of their 18 has come by way of threes. Val takes it down. It's knocked out of there. A three by Murphy. It's no good. Rebound. Monte up and in, and he muscled it in there. 18 to 11, Tampa by seven. They have made four threes here today already. Take it up, shot up, and it is good. And that was put up there by Gamble. Gamble 6'5", he's not afraid to go inside. 20 to 11, Tampa. They're gonna try to put 50 on the board here in the first half. Go inside RJ and he has it blocked. The ball's on the ground. He gets it outside Murphy. Shot up and a blocking foul on Tampa. And Murphy's going to the free throw line. Monte is coming down and talking to the coach. And it's Murphy at the free throw line. Uh, Panthers are down by 11, 20 to, uh, I mean, 9, 20 to 11 with 12.40 to go here in the first. And Murphy's going to shoot two free throws. That's the 15 foul on Tampa, the third on the Panthers. And I don't know what's going on, but we're not much of anything. They're uh, putting a stall on Murphy. The officials are waiting him out. Here goes Murphy at the free throw line where he's got two free throws coming. First free throw up, and it is good. And it's 22 to 12. Tampa up by eight. Not sure why my mic is making so much noise. Here comes a second free throw by Murphy, and it is not good. 61% from the free throw line. Tampa's got the eight point lead and the ball with 12 and a half minutes to go. They throw it away, and we lose it. My, two of our, and then we leave open a three and they drill it, that's five threes. 15 points out of their 23 came from the way of the three point shooter. And it is a 11 point lead. Long pass over to Murphy. Murphy's got it, he gets the screen. Offensive on Mate. And we're gonna bring in Orija. We're gonna take a timeout at 11.54. It's all Tampa, 23 to 12. It'll be Florida Tech basketball when we come back. The Golden Panthers are Berman, Hopkins, Wright, and Liam. Bisque Education, Carabas Italian Grill, Frog Bones, Health First, Marco's Pizza, Mego Malley, National Management Resources, Old School Pizza, Pepsi, Satcom Direct, Southern Janitor Supply and Service, University Center Imaging Medical Technology Transfer. We're waiting on some stats, and we'll go over some of those here when we get them up here.
So cheerleaders are out there and the dance team is out there and the Panthers are down by 11 here in the first and Tampa's trying to put a lot of points on the board. Got 11.54 to go. They're going to try to put 50 on us the first half. And they got five threes that I know of. Uh, we've made one. They're five out of seven. That's 70% any way you look at it. Wow. We're out rebounding them just 13 to four. Nothing there. We've turned it over five times. They have not yet turned it over. And no, it's Tampa's ball who's coming back with it with the 11 point lead. I thought we had the ball. Nope. Tampa's got the ball. Here we go. Panthers are in a zone. Oregia's in there now. They're going to shoot another three. Missed it. Rebound, and they get it back. Wow. They got the long rebound back again and get another shot at it. They take it into the paint. Inside they go. No good. Rebound up. It's not good. Ball's on the ground. They get it back again with a new shot clock. They're going to shoot another three, and eventually they're going to make some, but they don't. And Profanus gets a rebound. So it's still an 11-point lead by Tampa. They go to RJ in the corner, goes inside Murphy. Murphy's shot up, it's good, and he's fouled. Murphy's got 10 points. RJ's got four rebounds. So Murphy's uh, going for a number 11 out of, uh, we've got 14. He's got 10 of that 14 already. And here comes the free throw up, and this one is not good. He's one out of three at the free throw line. Have to work on that a little bit. Tampa's working against the zone. In the corner they go. They've taken out their big guy. They're going all six sixes and six fives or so and a late whistle. And the whistle is going on Murphy. And looks like they're putting uh, Gamble at the free throw line, about a 67% free throw shooter for two. First foul on Murphy, free throw's good. Why not? They have made threes at a great clip, not 70%. 24 14, and they got the 11 point lead back again, and it's a 25 to 14. Val brings it across center court, back it goes to Val. They take it in the corner to RJ, back outside Val. They get it to Murphy. Murphy on the baseline. Outside to Val. Murphy again. He's going to shoot a three. Missed it. Rebound goes inside. Val gets it. It's knocked out of bounds, and it's going Tampa's ball. I'm going to take something off of this microphone. I don't know what's going on here. Anyway, it's 25-14. Tampa's up by 11. They got the ball, and we're at the 10-minute mark of the first half. Ball knocked out of bounds. It's going to stay with Tampa. Well, Tampa came out focused. We weren't so much. They get it in the corner, go for a three. That's their sixth three. Six out of eight. Wow, it's a 14 point lead. And Tampa is just killing us. They go inside RJ up and in. 28, 16. Tampa, nine and a half minutes to go. Tampa, 
They're working against the Florida Tech zone. They just penetrate that zone, dribble right in, lay it in. They dribble right through that zone. That's not something that you can allow. You cannot allow them to dribble right into the zone and get into the paint that easily. Well, Regia has it outside to Murphy. Murphy's on the baseline. Shot up is good. And Murphy is killing them. Well, he's leading us, let's put it that way. He ain't hurting them too much because they got a 30 to 18 lead. They take a driving lay in and nobody home. Everybody's pointing to everybody else out there and say, who let him get the lay in? And it's a 14 point game for Tampa. Eight and a half minutes to go. Val takes it into the paint and he is going to get a blocking foul on Tampa. Wow, 8.25 to go, it's 32-18, it's Tampa, and at the free throw line is Val. He pretty good free throw shooter at 88%. But we are one out of three at the free throw line so far. Here comes the free throw by Val. It's good. And it's 32 to 19. 8.25 to go. And who's they bring in? They brought in number 22, I think, uh, Brent Duncan. And he missed the second free throw, and there you go. They take it all the way down, dish it out in the corner, and a foul on Oregia. A little late getting there, so he fouled. They will not be shooting free throws, though. Now the Panthers trying to get their defense set up so they don't get a lay-in inside the paint. They go way outside. Take it in, they dish it way outside again. Long pass across court. Now they're gonna shoot a three, that's not good. They get the rebound up and in. Nobody home again and they're up by 15. Wow, I wouldn't have believed it. 7.50 to go. And the Panthers are down by 15. Oh, Regis got it. He gets it out to Val. Out in the corner and Roriga for three. Missed it. Rebound tipped around. And here comes Tampa. Fast break all the way down off the glass. No good. Rebound RJ and a foul on somebody. And who's it on? It's going to be on Tampa. We're going to take a timeout. 7.23 to go. It's all Tampa 34 to 19. The Silver Panthers are Baker Sporting Goods, Boeing, Central AC, Cumulus, Domino's, Duran Golf Club, the Hilton Doubletree, Hilton Rialto, Jersey Mike Subs, Marriott Courtyard, the Residence Inn. So Tampa came in here fired up and hit everything they threw in from the threes. And the Panthers defense were nowhere near them. And that is a problem. Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Mims up in the Carolinas. Right now, the son Billy is gonna have to do something here to get his team into this match. It's down 15. They need to get this thing down to single digits before halftime. They got seven minutes and 23 seconds to get that done. And then come out with a little bit of focus in the second half and make a game out of this. Eckert only lost one game and that was the Virginia Union. And Tampa beat Virginia Union. So uh, if you look at all that stuff and put it all together, you think you're in a little bit of trouble, and right now it's proven we are in some trouble. 
Panthers were uh, doing pretty good for a while. They won five in a row and not so much right now. Murphy's got 12 points. RJ's got two. 13 points for Gamble. That's their, their six out of 11 now from the threes, which is down to 56%. Pretty good. The rebounds are 14 to 11 Panthers at the free throw line, RJ Coyle. RJ's on a one and one here. Free throw up is good. And it is 34-20. RJ's about a 78% free throw shooter. Here comes the second free throw up, and he made both of those. And it's a 13-point ball game. They need to get busy about playing defense and get this thing down there uh, in single digits. Long pass way across court, and they turn it over. They get it off to Val. Val gets it off to Origi. He takes it all the way down up, and he's fouled. The foul is going on 23. That would be uh, Bellamine. So Bellamine picked up the foul. They're going to put uh, Origi at the line. And they... You know, he hadn't been there a lot, but he makes a lot of them when he gets there. He's a 90% free throw shooter when he gets there, and it's a 12-point ball game now. 34-22. They bring in number 32, which is uh, Brendan Baker. Here comes the second free throw by Region. He uh, missed the second one. Uh, we're not doing too good at that free throw line. Yeah. We're three out of six, 50%. Ball blocked there by Profanis. Off it goes to Murphy. Murphy splits it through. Comes right on the baseline. Gets it off to Val. Get it back to RJ for a three. He missed it. Rebound knocked around and they get it. And here they come down the court and they don't take much time getting there either. Inside they go. Shot up and blocked. Picked off by RJ. Well, they went inside there, and uh, there's too much meat in there for the Panthers to let that happen. They get it off to Origi outside. He's on the baseline, and he was throwing it to no one, but Val got it anyway. He's going to shoot a three. He didn't get close. RJ got it. Outside it goes. That ball didn't hit anything, and a shot clock violation. That ball hit the rim. That ball hit the rim a while ago and it didn't reset the clock. And according to one official hit the rim, the other one, uh, Curtis Klein is, uh, I'm not sure he's agreeing with him or not, but it did hit the rim. Whether they turn this around or not, I don't know. And they're thinking about doing something with it, but I'm not sure what. And the shot clock uh, guy needs to see if it hits a rim. He needs to not leave that up to the official. If he sees it hits a rim, he needs to kick it in, and they are going to give him. Um, it's going to be Panther basketball. I think. We'll see. Now they're not sure what to do, the officials, but the ball hit the rim, and I looked up, and the shot clock was at 2 when it hit the rim, and then they uh, didn't reset the shot clock, and then it went off, and one official said the shot clock should have been reset because it, it grazed the rim coming down. But we'll see what happens here in the long run. It's up to these three, or three officials. It's going to be Panther basketball. And it's going to be 26 seconds on the shot clock. So a big break by the Panthers there. They're down by 12. And the ball is knocked out of bounds there by uh, Marino. And Val's going to throw it in again right in front of uh, Richard Schmidt's bench. They get it off to Origa. He gets it back to Val. 
They go to Murphy. And a traveling call on Murphy. <laughs> I thought the guy undercut him a little bit, but no, the Curtis says no, he traveled. I didn't like that shot clock call you made, and I'm gonna get that back. 34 to 22, the lead is 12. Origa got in there and a kicking foul on RJ picked up his second. 5.36 to go and uh, now they're uh, they're going to shoot some free throws. First foul on RJ. And it looks like they're putting Ibrahim uh, at the line. He's about a 91% free throw shooter. Got to think he'll make these. And it's up and good. So it's a 13 point lead. 15 was their biggest lead. They got it 13 now and trying to get it 14 to do. I said get it down to single digits. We had it down to 12 and the ball, but then we didn't do anything with it. Murphy's got it outside. It's Perfonis. He's going to shoot a three. Nothing happened, and it hit the line, and that's it. Perfonis off a little bit. He's not having a good evening. He has got two points. And we're at the five-minute mark here of the first half. And the Panthers are down 14, and we steal the ball. Tipped by R.J., picked off by Perfonis. And Murphy takes it down inside the paint. It's shot up, and it's not good. Long pass down the court, and here they come in a hurry. Take it all the way down, up and in, and nobody home. And that's the biggest lead of the game at 16, 38 to 22, with 4.40 to go, and the Panthers are in big trouble here in the first half. Down by 16. Out in the corner, Origa for a three, he missed it. And the rebound goes to Tampa. They got two on one, and he traveled. All right. Yeah, they're running out of time to get to single digits down 16, and they just throw the ball away. And down they go the other way, and uh, let's see what to get off of that turnover now. In the corner, uh, way outside they go, and now they take it into the paint. Shot up, it's not good, rebound coil. Well, they didn't get anything out of it. Behind the back to Murphy. Murphy takes it into the paint. Up off the glass, it's good, and they can't do a thing with Murphy. 34 for 38 to 24 with three and a half minutes to go. The big surprise to me, I thought uh, Florida Tech would come out and fired up. They leave open three and it's not good. The rebound, they get it back and a foul on RJ, his second. Guy 22 is six foot six, RJ 6'10 and he just push us out of the way and get the rebound. We're going to take a timeout at 3:23. It's 38:24. Bronze Panthers or Art Lab, Crown Plaza, Fairfield Inn and Suites, the Holiday Inn Express and Suites, Holiday Inn Express, Melbourne, Jacoby's Fielding, Kiwi Tennis Club, La Quinta Inn and Suites, Off the Track, Phantom Productions, Ryan Reporting. Sandpiper Sportswear, C-Deck, Cenatech, and Walmart. Our partners are Carol Distributing, Mike Erdman, Flaminio Wealth Management, Hooters of Melbourne, Long Doggers, Southern Janitor, and USSI Global. So the Panthers uh, let them get all those threes out early, and then we couldn't recover from that. Right now, we're in a pretty big hole here. 
Down 14 with 323 to go in the first half. That don't mean anything. If you come out and uh, play the second half like you're capable, but uh, are we? Murphy's got 14 points. RJ's got four. That's the leading scorer. They got 13 out of Gamble. Rebounds are 18 to 17 Panthers. The trouble is they've made six out of 12 threes. We've made one out of 10. And they're at the free throw line again. Looks like number 22 is at the free throw line. Duncan, he's about a 67 per front three-point shooter. Let's see, he's got a, I mean, a three-point free throw shooter. And he's got, I think it's a one and one here. Or is he getting two? Let's see, he is getting two. His free throw up and it's good. Let's see, at the free throw line, they are four out of five. Now they're five out of six. We're five out of nine. They're 83%. We're 56%. And they're more than that now. So it's back to 16 points, 40 to 24. Tampa came out red hot, and the Panthers not so much. Murphy takes it. He jump shot is good and he's killing him Murphy is but that's the only thing is keeping us halfway in the game as Murphy has 16 points out of our 26 and they're going to shoot a three on the other end and just absolutely drill it 43 26 that's the biggest lead at 17 245 to go here in the first half I'm a little discouraged Darius Wright's in the lineup. Takes it into the paint. Dishes it off Origa for three. He's way short. He is not having a good shooting night and hasn't had one in the last few games. Shot up is no good. RJ on the rebound. And here comes Murphy. Murphy dishes it off to Origa. Outside RJ for a three. He didn't hit anything. And the ball's going to Tampa, and things are going to have to change pretty quick. we got two minutes to go, and they're ready to blow this thing sky high now. And they shoot a three outside and got it, and it is 46-26 Tampa. Wow. 1.50 to go. And Billy's going to take every starter he's got out in a minute as soon as he gets a chance. Murphy's got it. Back outside it goes. Murphy on the long shot outside. He got another one. Timeout, Billy, and he wants a rotation. He's putting five new ones in. They ought to leave Murphy out there. Murphy's got like 17 or 18 points out of those all we got out there. A minute 33 to go. It's 46-29. 17-point lead by Tampa, and we're getting so far behind now. I don't know if we can catch up. So Billy did a rotational timeout, and he's taking everybody out, putting a new bunch in. And it looks like it's going to be uh, Kaplan, more, uh, Jordan, uh, Cummings, Noble, and uh, Shanneville. So Panthers got five new ones in there, and he's giving Murphy a break because it's out of hand now. 17 point game. And Tampa playing about as good as they can play. Here's another three, and it's way short. Rebound Kaplan. Long pass down to Nigel. And he missed the lay-in, and Cummings gets it back. Outside it goes. And Kaplan doesn't take it. I wouldn't mind him shooting it. He's a pretty good shooter. Now he takes it into the paint. Outside it goes. Trey's going to shoot it. He's going to miss it. Rebound goes the other way, and here comes Tampa. And he... Traveled. No, he charged. 
So they took a charge. 49 seconds ago, it's 46-29. The lead is 17. And they turn it over. It's first foul there going on number 15, which is Colley. Here comes Trey down, and he goes down to his left side. They get it off to Kaplan in the corner. Kaplan looking for a screen. Has it taken right away from him, and here they go down the court, and it's as easy lay in. Nope, missed it. Kaplan got it back. He missed that lay in with 20 seconds to go, and Cummins takes it all the way down off the glass. He's going to the free throw line. Not got any stats at the free throw line. And Harry Craig's coming in, and who's coming out? Uh, free throw line, we got two free throws coming up at Cummins. Let's see what he does. First one's up, and it's not good. And Kaplan goes out, and Harry comes in. All right, makes that free throw though, and it's 46 to 30 with 15 seconds to go, and Tampa go for the last shot. Knowing them, it'll be a three. Now we're down to four seconds. And they're gonna shoot it, it's not good. That's the end of the first half. It's 46 to 30, and wow, Tampa has really laid it on the Panthers. We'll be back with the stats as soon as we get them. Okay, here comes the stats. Marino had five, Biffle had four, 11 for Colley, 13 for Gamble, two for Downer, five for Ibrahim, four for Duncan, and Bellamine had two. Murphy had 19 points, four for Coyle, one for Val, two for Mate, two for Profanus, one for Oija, Cummings had one. We out-rebounded them 22 to 20. They made eight threes, we made two. So six to 18. So that's the name of the game. They got 18 points more than us in the threes and uh, that's the name of the game. Free throws, they made six out of seven. We made six out of 11. We turned it over eight times, they turned it over four times. 
So the stats are ugly. I'm going to take a little bit of a time out here, and we'll be back in about 10 minutes.
All right, we're back here at courtside, and uh, some of the stats that are hard to understand is that, uh, well, Tampa scores about, uh, yeah, they score 67 points a game. They already got 46. So all they need is to get 21 more points. I got their average. And we score, uh, Florida Tech scores about 80 points a game, and we got 30. And uh, three-point shooters, you know, they're 32% on uh, three-point shooters. They're 53 tonight. And you got to have to blame that on our defense uh, if that's the case. Uh, there's no other place you can put it. Panthers are out rebounding them 22 to 20. RJ is, uh, he got eight rebounds, but only got four points. And then, you know, he's averaging almost 15 points a game. So, and they're not that big inside. It's just hard to understand Murphy averages about 18 points a game he's already got 19 so he got ready to go and it looks like Tampa's going to get the ball to start here and insult the injury they get the ball to start second half and we got three seconds to go and we're about ready to get this game underway and we got 20 minutes of basketball and the you know, if they can get up 20 points on us in the first half, we can get up 20 on them in the second half, but will we? That's the next thing. So we'll see what happens here is uh, Panthers have uh, dug a pretty deep hole here. When can they crawl out of it? Uh, the starting lineup now is a little different, and they drill a three right out of the shoot, 49 to 30, and uh, and they put Trey Shanneville in there to start this uh, second half, and we just seem to be not focused with a little lethargic here. I mean they threw another three in there right off the bat. That gives them nine out of 16. Trey thought about it, he didn't do it. Profanis goes inside to Murphy, turnaround jumper, it is not good. I'm afraid we're in for the long night. And uh, they're gonna call a foul on Profanis, his third. And they're gonna shoot another three and they got another one. And it is 52 to 30. Wow. That's the biggest lead they've had. They had 20 points at one time, but now, now it's 22. They get it off the bow on the baseline. He gets it in the corner for Faunus and he missed it. Rebound uh, foul is going on Tampa. RJ got the rebound. That's his ninth rebound. He's got no points tonight. And Darius is coming in, and who's coming out? Uh, let's see who did come out. Uh, Val came out. So Panthers are really in a hole now. They get it to Murphy. Murphy's going to shoot a three outside. He's going to miss it. And a foul is on the Panthers. And it's going to be on Darius Wright. Fifty-two thirty. it is all Tampa. They started right out of the shoot, making uh, four threes, and they haven't let up yet. They go inside, ball up and in. 54-30, and uh, this is a blowout now with 18-20 to go. Yeah. 
Long pass out to Murphy. Murphy goes out to Darius. He takes it inside off the glass. No good. RJ uh, loses it. He had it and dropped it, and they get it back. And their pull-up three is not good. Rebound for Faunus, and here goes Trey down the court. Down 30, 24. RJ has it inside and has it stripped. And they're in the corner, they're on the baseline, and the ball turned over. Here comes Darius with it. They get it off the tray, back to Darius, and Murphy off the glass, it's good. And he's got 21. 21 out of the 32 belongs to Murphy. And the lead is 22, and they take it into the paint, dish it back out, and they go inside. R.J. steals that pass. Trey's got it, has it knocked away from him. And it's a turnover. And they're going for another three, and that really killed us. 57-32, the lead is 25 for Tampa. Wow. Murphy's got it. Outside Darius. They get it off to Profanus. Trey for three. He got it. 57-35. The lead's 22. They steal away. It goes to Trey down for the lay-in. It's good. He's got five points and 20 seconds here. And it's a 20-point lead, 57-37 with 16-20 to go. They're way outside with it. Long pass across court. They leave them open for three, and they drill another one, too. Wow. 60 to 37. They've been averaging 67 points a game, and they're going to get that. And we throw it away. And it's immediate timeout. It's 60 to 37. Tampa up by 23. It'll be Tampa ball when we get back. And I'm just going to take a break here and wait on some stats. on stats here at the 15 minutes 49 seconds to go in this basketball game the Panthers are down by 23 it'll be Tampa's ball when we get back here too I was kind of surprised here that uh, the Panthers uh, came out uh, this lethargic and letting them have all those open shots they're 12 out of 19 from the threes that's 63 percent or 17 percent we turn it over 12 times. We're six out of seven at the free throw line for 85%. We're six out of 11, 54%. Wow. Here they come down the court, and Tampa's got the ball and a 23-point lead. They're going to shoot another three, and they're going to drill it, too. Wow. Let's see, 21. He has got 25 points. And let's see, 21 has made uh, 7 out of 10 from the threes. A technical foul on uh, Tampa.
So Curtis Fly Klein threw a technical foul on uh, 20, let's see, who was it? 15, I think. So it's 63-37, the lead is 26. And the technical foul, they're gonna let Profana shoot free throws. And tonight at the free throw line, he's a pretty good free throw shooter, but he hadn't shot any uh, free throws tonight. So RJ is going to shoot the free throws. Uh, maybe the, I don't know if it's the, I don't know if it's technicals or what he's shooting. Let's, well, it doesn't matter. Free throws up. He missed that one. We just have not had anything tonight at all, and it was such a big game for the Panthers. RJ uh, missed both free throws. Now Profanus will shoot the technicals. And it's up, and he made that one. So, he gets another free throw, and he made that one as well. So it's a... Uh, 63-39, 24-point lead, 15-16 to go. And, there, you know, we may not be able to get that all back, but we need to get competitive in this and have something to build on. And they throw it into Trey. And here comes the Panthers with the basketball and down 24. 15 minutes to go in the ball game. They get in the corner to Darius. Darius outside, a long pass out to Perfonis. He's on the baseline, he takes it into the paint, shot up, he's fouled. He's going to the free throw line again. Got whacked in the head, but he don't care. 14.50 to go at 63.39, and Perfonis will shoot two free throws. Billy's still talking to his team over there, and... Uh, after this first free throw, he'll have to put somebody on there. Thomas, uh, free throw up, and it's good. He's not going to put anybody there. He's uh, expecting him to make this one anyway. All right, the second free throw, and he made that one too. So it's 63 to 41. The lead is what? 22. They're less quicker than we are. There's no doubt about that. And Profanus on the rebound. He gets it off to Murphy. Murphy brings it across center court. He gets it out to Profanus. He takes it into the paint. Back outside Murphy. Profanus up and in. 63-43. The lead is 20. 14.20 to go in the ball game. Long pass down the court. They left 21 open. Now I wouldn't leave him open. And a foul is going on RJ. Fourteen oh nine to go. It's 63-43. And the Panthers were down like 27. And now they're down to 20. And that pass, uh, oh, should have caught that pass. They take it into the paint and a blocking foul on RJ. RJ 
RJ not having a good night tonight. He's uh, getting a few rebounds, but uh, his scoring and being in the right place, he's having a little bit of difficulty tonight. Free throw up, and it's good. And they've made a lot of free throws. And, well, they're seven out of eight. And they're eight out of nine. And the lead is uh, 22 again. They get it outside Darius Wright. It's off to Trey. Trey's going to shoot a three, and he's going to miss it. The rebound goes off to Tampa. Tampa with a 22-point lead, 13 and a half minutes to go, and they've got the ball. They take it into the paint, driving lay in, and nobody home. All right. It's one of those games, but it was one we could not afford to have. Darius Wright for three. He got it. And it's 67-46, 21-point lead. And we're, and it's stolen away by Trey. Trey takes it all the way down off the glass. It's good. And it's 67-48. The lead is 19. And RJ is about ready to go to the bench. And let's see, that is R.J. picked up a foul. Let me see how many that is on him. That's his fifth. He fouled out. I think he wanted to foul out because uh, that was a foul way away from nowhere. I mean, there was, we, that was about all the way over and near out of bounds. Twelve and a half minutes to go. It's 67 to 48. Ball blocked by Murphy, and they're going to call a foul on it. Nigel Jordan's in there. He took uh, RJ's place. They're going to put him at the free throw line. It is a 19-point game here. 12-21 to go. A lot of time to get this game respectable, but Tampa has been shooting the lights out of it. They're 9 out of 10 at the free throw line as a team. That's pretty good. And now they're uh, 10 out of 11. And the lead is 21, 69 to 48. They already got their average for the season already. Trey takes it in, shot off the glass, it's good. 69 to 50, the lead is 19. They go right through, get it all the way down. It takes it up and in. And it's 71-50. We're trading baskets here and that won't get it. It's 11.43 to go, it's a 21 point game. They get it to Murphy. He has it blocked inside. They're knocked out of bounds. It's Florida Tech's basketball. Timeout, 11.34 to go. 71-50. Panthers down 21. We'll get some stats. Be back.
Okay, the early score is a Gamble with 25. Our leading score is Murphy with 21. Nine points for Trey now. He's our second leading scorer. He played nine minutes. RJ fouled out, and he had uh, four points and nine rebounds. Uh, not a very good night for the big man. One out of four from the field. Two out of four from the free throw line, and oh out of two at the threes. And not a night that we expected out of him. He's been giving us uh, 15 points a game and nine rebounds a game. He got his rebounds. Just so happens that he didn't get any points. I thought he'd have a big night because we were a lot bigger inside than they were. They go inside to Murphy. Ball's knocked out of bounds, and uh, they were all over him. They doubled and triple teamed him inside. With 11.23 to go, we'll uh, take another timeout. It's 71 to 50, and uh, I don't know how long. It's a full timeout, so we'll go over some of those stats while we got a chance here. Uh, we've turned it over 12 times. They turned over eight. Rebounds are even at 25 apiece. In the paint, we're leading that 24 to 20. Off of turnovers, they're beating us 13 to seven. Everything else pretty much about the same. They don't go to the bench a whole lot. They got three in double figures, 11 out of Marino and 14 out of Collie and 25 out of Gamble. We got 21 points out of Murphy, nine out of Trey Shanneville and Profanus now has eight points, so he's Getting a little wound up a little bit. He's not made any threes, though. We've only made four threes. They've made 13. That's nine. That's 27 points right there, and that's the name of the game, really, in the free throws. So, no golf to me tomorrow. Having a tournament out there, and I didn't get in it because I had to play today and tomorrow, and I couldn't play today. All right, whose ball is going to be Panther basketball? 11-23 There's a lot of time to go here. You can really get a lot of things turned around, but can we? We get it to Murphy. Back outside it goes. Foul on Perfonis. That's his fourth, I didn't think. Yes, it is. That's just a turnover we cannot afford when we're down by 21. You just can't do it. The Panthers are playing a, a scrap in pretty good now, but and he traveled, and that was the travel is going to be called on 21. Gamble, their big scorer. So he made a turnover. Derry's going to throw it in. He's going to give it in to Papanis. Profanus playing with four fouls, and he's still in there. And why not? Trey gets it across center court. Back outside Darius. They go to Murphy. It nah, was a bad pass there. And we get it back, though. Trey's going to shoot a three. He's going to miss it. Rebound knocked around. They get it. They got a fast break going the other way. Slammed it. 23-point lead. Ten and a half minutes to go for Tampa. That's a big turnaround. We could have got it to 18 instead of it went back to 23. Five-point turnaround. Shot up by Murphy. It's good. Wow, Murphy's having a big night. He's got 23. And we still got 10 minutes to go. They leave that three-point shooter open. He missed it, though, and they get the rebound. Wow. It's a 21-point ball game, and they're outside again. Now they're taking that little jumper. It is good. 75-52 with 9.45 to go. A 
Get it off to Nigel Jordan. I'm not sure he had dribbles. He, he did, I guess. Murphy's got it outside. Performance back to Murphy. He's going to shoot a three. He's going to drill it, too. Wow, what a game. 75-55, but lead is 20. Hey, ho, 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 nobody home. Slam dunked it there. So Tampa's up 22 with nine minutes to go, and we're just swapping baskets around, and that ain't going to get it. And the ball knocked around. No, 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 it went the other way. No, they one official didn't see it. The other one did. We're bringing in Cummings. And who's coming out? And Niger, they're going small now. Here it is to Cummings. Back outside to Murphy. Murphy gets it to Perfanis. He's outside. He gets it to Darius Wright. Darius going to shoot a three, and he's going to miss it. Rebound goes to Cummings. Cummins says get out of the way, and they get it to Murphy. Murphy takes it into the paint, little jumper, not good. Rebound goes Tampa. And it's still 22 points, 8.25 to go. Tampa's got the ball, little jump shot up, it's short. They get the rebound back, up, not good. Rebound goes for Faunus. They try to steal it, not hardly, and it's going back to the Panthers. 8.05 to go. It's 77.55. There's still a lot of time to make it respectable. It's not now. Down 22. A Kenta club that has not won a game in the league. Cummings up, missed it. And here we go the other way, and nope, they don't shoot it. 7.50 to go. The lead is 22. They take it into the paint, dribble it out of bounds. Florida Tech basketball, 7.45. We're on a timeout. 77-55, 22-point lead for Tampa. We'll get some stats. They won't be pretty. got 30 rebounds we got 27 so they're winning the rebounds now they're shooting 56 percent from the threes and 91 percent from the free throw line and 55 percent from the field absolutely outstanding numbers for tampa and that's why they have the 22 point lead nothing else is out of whack except They've made uh, almost all their free throws, and we haven't, and they've made a whole bunch of threes, and we haven't. And it's Tamp Tampa on defense. Florida Tech's got the ball, 22 point, and they're going to get a foul on Tampa. And it's going to be out of bounds. We are really went short here now. We got Trey in there, uh, Darius in there, and Cummings in there, and they're all three guards. And then Murphy and Perfonis. Trey's going to shoot a three. He's going to miss it. The rebound goes to Tampa. Here they come down the court in a hurry. Up and in. They just took it coast to coast, and uh, we didn't have a chance. 79-55. 
Cummings up, no good. Rebound goes to Tampa. 7 minutes to go. And they're getting lay-ins and free throws all day long now. Billy is pretty discouraged with what's going on cuz I can see him down there. He don't like much of anything that he sees down there and he didn't get much out of his play today except he got a, a lot out of uh, Murphy. Free throw up. Man, they've made a bunch of free throws. Uh, not that they've made more than we have. There just had to be 11 out of 12. Here it takes it all the way down and Murphy is fouled. And he's going to the free throw line. Let's see, Murphy's got 26 points. And he's going to the free throw line for a couple of uh, more attempts. Nope, they called it on the floor and no free throws. They want somebody on the lineup. And we're bringing in uh, Mackay Noble. He's coming in. I haven't seen him today. And they need him in there because they're out rebounding us now. And we throw the ball away. And that's the end of that. That's a lay in all the way. Wow. Not much you can do about this kind of effort tonight. Tampa just came out focused and wanting this win more than we did. And they took it too. Mackay's made a couple of turnovers there and a shot up. It's not good. And Perfonis fouls out. He fouls out with eight points and six rebounds. And Mate is coming in. Uh, Not sure what's happening there. They wouldn't let Mate and they brought on the Phil Bernard in. So who's coming out? I think uh, Makai will be coming out if he makes this free throw, and he does. Now he's coming out, and in comes Monte. Free throw, he made both of them. It's 85-55, the lead is 30 now. It's 6.21 to go. Uh, wow. What happened to this defense today? They've been averaging 68 points a game, and they have got 86 already, and there's six minutes to go. Val's back into the lineup. Harry's in there. Monte. Murphy's still in there, and he's fouled, and the foul is going on Tampa. This time Murphy will shoot some free throws. Two shots for Murphy. Free throw is good. Murphy's got his points. You can't blame this game on him. He's got 27 points. He's going for 28, and he made 28. Six minutes to go. It's a 29-point game. Well, Tampa took uh, Florida Tech out of the game early and never let them back in it. Phil steals it, and it goes the other way, though. He turns it over, and they take it all the way down. And we get a foul on the Panthers, I think.
and uh, they're going the other way. And Tampa's going to be the full length of the court. 86-57. The lead is 29 for Tampa with five and a half minutes to go. They're going to shoot a three and miss it. Rebound goes to Mate. Off it goes to Murphy. Murphy down the court. Outside it goes. Harry for three out of the corner. No good. They get it back. They go inside. Tampa's working on the baseline. Shot up is good. No problem there. That's where their game is, and they made all these threes tonight, so they're just double trouble for the Panthers. Five minutes to go. It's 88-57. Their win is 31. They got the lead of 31. It had a, what, 16-point uh, lead at half, and they have just really put it on the Panthers. Harry threw it away. Here they come the other way. Fast break, and they came out of the crowd in a hurry. 90-57. They're going to score over 100, that's for sure, with four and a half minutes to go. They get it outside to Monte. He gets it over to Murphy. Murphy takes it down and knocked out of bounds. And Tampa clears the bench. The, well, some of them's already played. They didn't bring a whole lot. They got uh, Tyler Wilson in there. And they also got John Whitaker coming in. The rest of them's been in already. Four twenty-three to go. It's 90 to 57. Uh, the lead is 33. Wow. That is something I was not expecting. Panther basketball on the baseline. They get it to Monte outside to Val. Fills out in the corner. Back it goes to Val. He's looking for a screen. They get it to Monte. He takes it into the paint. Shot up is good. 60-59. The lead is, uh, what, 31. Under four minutes to go, and they're in no hurry. Why would they be? They're going to shoot one outside, though. It's a three, two, and it's good. 59-93. Yeah, they have 93. Wow. For a team that scores 68 points a game, that's uh, disgraceful. Outside Val, he takes it into the paint, in the corner. Murphy's out there, and he's going to miss it. Ball's tied up, and they jump ball, and it belongs to the Panthers. Wow, 321 to go. It is 93-59. We're on the last timeout of the ball game. Uh, well, official timeout. And Richard Smith will have a short ride back to Tampa as he has clobbered the Panthers here tonight. Big surprise for me. The Panthers knew what they had to do tonight to win this game and knew how important it was. They've been playing fairly well until the Eckerd game. Didn't play any good at all there. And Eckerd made a bunch of threes, and now the word is just come in and throw the threes up on the Panthers. They're not going to guard you out there, and that's going to be a problem. Because every club in this league can shoot threes. And uh, some of them don't shoot many of them because uh, you get in their face, but. Wow. Well, we only got one senior on this club, so that's part of it. You got a young ball club. Uh, some of them didn't get to see a lot of action when they were here last year. Like Perfanis was hurt early on, didn't get to play too much. 
and then he did get a little play. Now he's starting this year, and RJ was the one that played mostly, and he's a senior, and, uh, and Murphy was out with an injury all last year. This is his first year. He's been out for a year. It's uh, Panther basketball. And it is going to be Val throwing it in. They get it outside. Harry's shot up is good. And 93-61. The lead is 32. Three minutes to go. They take it into the paint. And a foul on Monte. Nope. Foul on who? A Val, I think. And they're going to put uh, Tyler Wilson at the free throw line. No stats there on Tyler's free throw shooting. And uh, he made that one. Uh, their free throw shooting is pretty much a phenomenal. They're 11 out of 12. Wow. Eleven out of twelve. And the twelve out of thirteen. Wow. Unbelievable. So here comes Val. Cross center court. Gets it to Murphy. Murphy gets it out to Monte. Monte takes it into the paint, dishes it off to Harry, missed it. Rebound goes to Tampa. Here they come down the court. They lose it coming down and picked up by the Panthers. Off to Murphy. Murphy's going to shoot a three. He made it too. Murphy's got at least 30. Or about 30. He got half of our points. 2.20 to go. It's 95 64. Tampa by 31. They're going to shoot one out of the corner. A miss one. That shot was put up there by uh, Zach Patterson. We hadn't seen him in here. He's in there now. Murphy outside. Takes it into the paint. And a foul is going to be called on Tampa. They're going to put Murphy at the free throw line for a one and one. Murphy having a big night, and no one else uh, came to play. 95-64. He's got about 30. And he makes that one. And the lead is 30 for Tampa. 95-65 with a minute and 50 to go. Comes Murphy's second free throw. And it's up and good as well. Wow. Got a big tournament coming next uh, a week from Tuesday or something. And uh, they're going to shoot one way outside and drill a three, too. Wow, 98-66 with one and a half minutes to go. Murphy takes it in and has it stolen away. Down the court they come, shot up, no good. Free throw, he will shoot two free throws. And let's see, uh, Wilson has been averaging less than one points a game. He's got about seven or eight. At least five. He got a three and two free throws. I don't know what else he's got either. Uh, we put also in there, I didn't see him come in, was uh, Gary Ellington's in the lineup. Foul was on, uh, I think, Phil 
Bernard, and they make that second free throw. And it's 99 for them, 66 for us. And they're going to get 100. Harry's got it outside. He gets it off to Garrett. Get it to Murphy. Murphy's turnaround jumper. It's not good. Out of bounds. Going to be long to Florida Tech. 99-66. The lead is 33 with 59 seconds to go. And who called a timeout, Billy? So it's a 33-point lead by Tampa. Man, didn't see this coming. Okay, it's Panther basketball. 99-66, they're trying to get 100. They only average 68 points a game, they're trying to get 100. Now, what does that tell you? Uh, I don't want to go there. Phil Bernard shot up, it's not good. Rebound goes to Tampa. And uh, they got 50 seconds to get a basket or a free throw to get 100. And they get the shot clock down to about 10. And they're going to shoot it out there. It's going to be a little short. Rebound Murphy. And Murphy down the court. He gets it off to Harry. Harry's going to shoot one out of the corner. He's going to make it, too. It's a three. 99-69, and uh, Harry's made five points. 15 seconds ago, and that's going to be all the scoring tonight. It's going to be 99-69. to It is going to be a 30-point win by Tampa, and that's something else. We'll get Billy up here, and this won't be nice either. So that's the end of it. And the Panthers uh, get shellacked here. 99 to 69. Tampa 99, uh, Florida Tech 69. We'll get Billy up here a little later and uh, see what he's got to say. Yeah, it won't be uh, anything very nice, I don't think. So we'll wait on Billy. And we'll wait on the stats.
Tampa, though, came in here with a game plan, and uh, and whatever it was, it worked quite well. Let's go over some of these stats. Marino had 13 points. Biffle had 13. Colley had 14. Gamble, 27. Four for Downer. Six for Wilson. Seven for Ibrahim. Four for Duncan. And Bellamine had 11 points. Murphy had 33 points. Four points for Coyle. Valson had one point. Four points for Mate. Eight points for Profanus. Nine points for Shanneville. Three for Wright. Five for Craig. One for Orija. Cummings had one. The rebounds were 38-30, their favor. They made 15 threes, we made seven, so they made 24 more points in threes than we had. They were 16 out of 18 from the free throw line. We made 14, so that's not the name of the game either. In the paint, they beat us 34-28. Off of turnovers, they killed us 20-9. Fast breaks to beat us 16-7. Their bench outscored us 28-19. We had 18 turnovers. They had 14. They shot 57 from the field that's outstanding we shot 37 they made 56 percent of their threes we made 24 percent of ours they made 89 percent of their free throws we made 67 so all in all is just a big shellacking and uh they took us to the cleaners here today their game plan i don't know what it was uh because normally speaking, I don't see them just raining threes in there. And if I look at some of their stats on threes, three-point fielders, they make about 32% of those. They shoot about 42 from the field. This time, uh, they shoot, instead of 32%, they shoot 56% from the threes. And in the field, instead of shooting 42%, they shoot 58%. So you got to blame it on our defense. It's the only thing you can do. Uh, defense just didn't show up. And uh, they really took it to us. And uh, Coach is uh, going to be unhappy. And, you know, he's got, uh, he's got a little time here before this tournament rolls around. And uh, he's got a tournament coming up here on the 18th and 19th. That's... Uh, Gonna have to do something about that. Got to reshape here and uh, get together. But right now he's he got one player stepped up here today, and that was uh, Murphy. Of course, I thought Perfanis played hard. Uh, he got eight points. That's well under his average. He got six rebounds, which is about what he usually gets. So I, I don't really make that as a big deal. Uh, Val only had one point. He's averaging about 10. And RJ had four points. He averages about 15. Yeah. We just can't figure it out because a team that just usually averages about 67 points a game comes up here and gets 99. That's just uh, 30 some odd more points than they're normally getting now. You got to blame it on your defense because you just you leave them wide open like that and they just drill them. And they made 15 threes, we made seven, and our percentages were terrible. They took only 27 threes, we took 29. They made 15 and we made seven. Wow, not good. Well, wait on Billy Mims to get up here, and uh, like I say, I figured it'd be a while before he shows up this time because he's talking to the team while this is fresh in their mind, saying, listen, you got beat by a team that's on the bottom of the league uh, with no wins in the conference. Now we're on the bottom of the league. Uh, Palm Beach Atlantic's 0-3. We're 0-2. That puts us one off of there and 
Rollins won, so they're one and two. And so Tampa's one and two. So, yeah, we're down there in the second to last place in the league. Not, and it doesn't get any easier for us, you know. The, we get uh, back, uh, we go down to Barry and play, and then bring uh, Barry, uh, and you know, they're uh, five and one. And then Florida Southern uh, comes into town, and they're six and one. And then Nova comes into town, and they're uh, five and zero, oh, and nationally ranked. And then we go to St. Leo, and St. Leo has uh, won something in the league already. So we've got a lot of thinking to do and a lot of preparation to get into and somebody's going to have to step up beside Murphy. You know, RJ will come back because he's six foot ten and weighs 265 pounds and he'll get he'll get lined up and Profanus will be there, but I don't know. Our backcourt's not coming across for us. And we're not getting anything out of our one and two. He'll be here. He'll come. So when he gets here, uh, we'll be talking to Coach Mims. You can here he comes now. The glaring thing is they usually score 67 points a game. They got 99. <laughs> and uh, we usually get a more out of everybody than just Murphy. Murphy had 33. Nobody else got in double figures. That was it. It was a poor display of basketball, Jim. Absolutely poor display. Uh, I just left our locker room with two words. I told him I was disappointed and I was embarrassed. To me, that's, what, that's all that sums it up for me. Disappointed. I was disappointed in our lack of effort. You know, we started the game with no energy. None. You know, and, and you know, you look, they hit 15 of 27 threes, but I don't think any one they made was contested. None. They were wide open threes. You know, and uh, Gamble goes seven for 12 behind the arc tonight. They put five players in double figures. Um, you know, I mean, obviously Gamble had a big time game, but he's a good basketball player. He had a big-time basketball game tonight. Um, they out-rebounded us. They outshot us. You know, they had 20 assists to 14 turnovers. We had 11 assists and 18 turnovers. I thought tonight, uh, you know, the only guy we had, as you said a moment ago, I thought one guy really showed up to play, and that was Derek Murphy. And, you know, R.J. Coyle rebounded the ball well, and, you know, he just never got the ball enough. He, he didn't get shots. Um, R.J. had nine rebounds. He had four steals. Uh, a couple of block shots. So, you know, he did the things that he's going to do night in and night out, but we just did such a poor job of giving him opportunities. We didn't get the ball to him. Um, you know, we just couldn't find ways to get him the ball inside. And Tampa did a great job. Tampa did a really good job of uh, clogging up the lane. And we talked to our guys about that all week. But I'll be honest, Jim, I thought we had a, we had a, a, a really sluggish week of practice. I didn't like our defensive effort in practice all week. Um, I thought today we didn't have a lot of energy in shoot around. Um, and you, it's hard to explain. I mean, I know we're a very high academic school, and this was the last week of regular classes. Um, and next week we have exams here, and those aren't going to be easy. Um, but at the end of the day, even if you're mentally exhausted from classes, this is your relief. This is where you come out on the floor on Saturday afternoon and have fun. I told the guys before the game, I said, do you want to have fun today? And everybody's, yeah. And I said, well, it's a lot more fun to win than it is to lose. I said, you need to go out there and play with that on, on your mind on every possession. If you want to have fun, you've got to put a winning effort together. And, uh, you know, again, it must have just went right over the top of their heads and out the door because we had very few guys that came out there and put up a winning effort. You know, I, 
even though Profanas had eight points, he still had six rebounds. He played hard, and, you know, he did what he could do. Uh, he just didn't – he's ten points short of his average. And I thought he played hard, though, and he rebounded well, and he tried to get in the passing lanes. And uh, uh, Trey came in, had nine points, only played 14 minutes. So uh, – but uh, turned it over a little bit, a couple of times. But uh. and Trey did a good job, you know. And again, here's the other thing, Jim. You know, we you, you look at a lot of guys for us out there. I mean, you know, Mate Pape is a sophomore. Antonis is a is a uh, a junior. But remember, he spent half of last year out injured. Uh, Murph is a junior, but he spent all of last year out injured. So those guys are just getting back into it. Then you look at Trey's a freshman. Darius Wright's a sophomore. Um, uh, Chris Cummings, freshman, Makai Noble, freshman, Nigel Jordan, sophomore, Garrett Ellington, freshman, Corey Kaplan, freshman. We, you know, we have a, a team that's just littered with youth. You know, we got a lot of young kids um, that, you know, have got to grow up. And this league, it's tough to win in this league uh, with such a young team. And right now that's hurting us. You know, Eckert brought in juniors and seniors and transfers and, you know, men, they played like men. Tampa did the same thing tonight. If you look at Tampa's lineup, you know, uh, Moreno, Biffle, Gamble, um, uh, Bellamine. Uh, Bellamine's a transfer from Miami Dade, so he's a junior college transfer. Um, but all of those guys, you know, they're juniors or seniors pretty much. Uh, they don't have a lot of freshmen, sophomores that play, you know, any considerable minutes for them. So the five guys that all scored tonight for them, uh, in double figures, I believe, were juniors or seniors. And, you know, they're a team that's that's a veteran, mature, physical, tough team. And I thought tonight, let's give credit where credit's due, you know. Richard Schmidt got his 700th win. Yeah. Uh, he's a heck of a coach. And I told our guys, you know, they were coming into this game tonight 0-2 Tampa. But, but, Jim, they lost to Barry and they lost to Florida Southern. And those are two of the best teams in our league. So Tampa had lost two games. And neither one of those games were blowouts. They competed with both Barry and, and Florida Southern. They lost at Southern by seven. They lost at home to Barry by 12. Uh, and remember, Tampa's also playing without their best player. Pat Bacon, senior guard, broke his foot, and he's probably out for the season. So they're even one big-time starter down, uh, and they're still you know, competing and playing at this level. Because they got five or six, you know, tough veteran kids that, that step on the court and they play like men. And I thought tonight Tampa brought more energy. I thought they played harder, so they brought more effort. I thought they wanted it more than us, so I thought they, their enthusiasm was way higher than ours from the very tip of the game. Uh, and I thought they executed. So, like I said, giving credit where credit's due. Uh, we did a real poor job of executing. They played man-to-man -man all night long. Solid man. We shot 38% for the ball game. Uh, you know, that's just poor. And, and we run, we think we run some of the best offenses in the league that are hard to defend. But Tampa just pushed us out of everything we wanted to do tonight. They out physical us, and that was the difference in the game. So, you know, when you look at our shooting percentages and you see how low they are, a lot of that is because we just got shoved out of the shot we wanted to take by really solid, good physical defense. And I don't think Tampa was playing anything. I'm not saying that there were fouls that, that got un, that went uncalled. I'm not saying they played illegal defense. I'm saying they played good, tough, physical man-to-man -man defense. And, you know, if you can do that, if you can push a team, physically take them out of what they want to do, then you're a good defensive team. And tonight I thought Tampa was an excellent defense. I know everybody looked at the, the threes that they made, but I thought the most impressive thing to me tonight by Tampa was their physical play, and, and they did it very well. Yeah, they're 10 seconds into the game. They made a three, and then they made two more after that. And, the, you know, the first three basket field goals were threes. And, 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 Jim, you know, we tried every defense in our repertoire tonight. You know, we ran about five different zones at them. We ran a, a full court trap at them. We ran man to man. We ran a half court trap. We ran a half court man to man trapping. We tried every defense in our arsenal, and none of them were good enough to stop them tonight. So I thought that it was just a very poor defensive performance for our team tonight. As I said, I mean, I've been here 14 years, and I'm as disappointed in our 
uh, performance tonight as I've ever been of any game in 14 years. I said to DeMario, he played for me. He was a GA for me. He's a full-time assistant for me now. I said, in all your time, I said, have we had a more embarrassing performance at home than that one? And he said, no, I don't think so either. So, yeah. you know, again, this is a, a Tampa team. Again, hats off to Tampa and Coach Schmidt. You know, uh, it, you know, they lost, you know, one of their team's best players in Pat Bacon, if not the team's best player. And certainly their senior captain leader, uh, third game of the season, he broke his foot and probably is done for the year. Um, so, you know, to be able to bounce back from that, Jim, and to be 0-2 in the league, losing two tough games against two tough teams, yet coming here tonight hungry to get off the bottom of the league. And that's what they did. Yeah. They came in here tonight, and they were so hungry, they got off the bottom of the league tonight, and that's what they did. And, again, hats off to them for their, their, their enthusiasm that they played with, their effort. You know, we always tell our kids – that you got to play hard, you got to play smart, and you got to play together. Tonight, Jim, I thought Tampa played harder, Tampa played smarter, and they certainly played more together than we did. Yeah, now you got this winter classic, and you know that's okay. But then you got to go on the road against Barry, and then you got Florida and no, uh, Florida Southern Nova hey, coming in there. The, God. Ne- the next, the next three conference games we play at Barry. Florida Southern here and Nova here. All, all ranked. All are ranked teams. All are ranked teams. And, and, you know, two of them have already beaten this Tampa team. Barry and Florida Southern have already beaten Tampa. Uh, Nova's undefeated. Um, you know, right now, Jim, you know, uh, we got to compete a lot better than we did. You know, and there's always the thing you tell, tell teams. You know, you can't worry about winning until you compete. You got to compete before you can win. Tonight in this game, we never competed. We competed with Eckerd. you got to remember, we were down five to, in, the, in the Eckerd game with 16 minutes to go in the ball game. R.J. Coyle picked up his, his fourth foul, came out of the game. Eckerd went on a 12-0 run, and we found ourselves down 17, 20, 24. And so the rest of the game, you know, against Eckerd, um, you know, we, were all, we, were, we dug ourselves too big of a hole to come out of in the second half. But tonight, we never competed at all. No. You know, we were down 16 at the half. And as you said, the first, I mean, all they did was step in bounds and hit a three to start the second half, and we're down 19. Yeah. Looking up at a huge deficit again. And, and it seemed to be that way throughout the second half. I mean, you know, we gave up 46 points in the first half. We gave up 53 in the second half. And I just felt like, yeah, they shot the lights out. But part of the reason they shot it so well was how, how poorly we defended, Jim. Yeah. We just. You know, we talk a lot about our zones, about flying around and showing some toughness in our zones. We didn't fly around at all tonight. Uh, Tampa never had a difficult three-point shot tonight, and because of that, you know, they made 56% of their threes. Well, it's about all we can say about it. I mean, it was a humiliating loss, and you got to get ready for your tournament, and then you got to get ready for the rest of the conference, or or it's going to be a long season. Well, Jim, you know, anytime you like, again, remember, let's let's not. You know, let's not kid ourselves. You know, we lost some pretty good players last year. We lost Sam Daniel. Uh, we lost Pat Anderson. We lost Jordan Majors. We lost Mike Milligan. We lost like 68 points of the 80 points a game we averaged. So when you look at it, we have a lot of big shoes to fill this year, and we're trying to do it with a lot of young guys and like a lot of guys who, you know, sat out all of last year. Uh, you know what's funny about the game tonight? I mean, this Tampa is no, you know, they're a conference team. They're just like the Sunshine State Conference. Yet tonight, I felt like there were moments where we competed better against Georgia Tech than we did against Tampa. There were moments we competed better against Florida Atlantic than we did against Tampa. And saying that, you know, R.J. Coyle was sick at Georgia Tech and he was didn't play in the Florida Atlantic game. Valor Valson was also sick and hurt and you know, played very little in the Florida Atlantic game as well, sat an, sat an entire half. So I thought, you know, in preseason there were moments that even with a team that was shorthanded, we competed better in moments against two Division One programs better than we competed against a, a conference team tonight in the University of Tampa. So, you know, at the end of the day, like, like we said, I mean, I, again, I want to congratulate Richard Schmidt on his 700th victory. I don't know if you saw, uh, as soon as the game was over, I, I grabbed the game ball and gave it to him. Uh, I'm in the hopes that his team will all sign it for him and that it will be a special, you know, trophy on his mantle back home or in his office at Tampa. But, you know, he's had a tremendous career. I have a lot of respect for Richard Schmidt. 
you know, I, I told him, I said, you know, I count myself as very fortunate to have had the opportunity to coach against him for so many years. Uh, and he said, Billy, I really appreciate that. And, you know, it's been an honor to coach against you as well. And, you know, there's a guy that's won 700 games in his career, you know, and, and we've beaten him a few times too. So uh, at the end of the day, he's a stellar coach, and, you know, I'm ecstatic and, you know, want to congratulate him on that. Um, and, and the other thing, to, to, to end on a positive note, you've got to be pleased in the performance Derek Murphy had. I mean, obviously it was a, a performance in a game where, you know, we were just so bad we needed somebody to do something positive. You know, Murphy took 26 shots to score his 33 points. But, and, and you say, well, that's high volume, but we couldn't find anybody else that was even getting the shots off. Now the so percentages are pretty good. At least Murphy was strong enough to, to play against Tampa's physical play and, and create shot opportunities for himself. So, you know, again, he was four for eight behind the arc today, five for seven at the free throw line, 33 points, two assists. 12 of 26 from the floor, which, you know, you know, one more shot, he'd have had 50% shooting. So Yeah, all the way across. He only shot just barely, overall for the game, barely below 50%, but 50% at the line and, and much better than that, uh, sorry, at the line and, and 50% behind the arc. Um, offensively, Derek had a great game today. Uh, the biggest problem was twofold. We had nobody else out there, you know, scoring with him. And we couldn't stop Tampa from scoring no matter what we tried. So, as I said, we played everybody on our roster today. Everybody get, got in the game. Everybody got some court time. If you look at it, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of our players got double-figure minutes. And then one, two, three more of them got six or more minutes in the game. So, you know, we got a lot of players. Eleven guys played six-plus minutes in the basketball game. Hopefully down the stretch that's going to help us, you know, give some valuable uh, court time. I will also say uh, I, I thought Harry Craig came out there and, you know, played with some, some class and dignity. Uh, he played hard. Harry got one steal out there. He did have one turnover, but he was one for two behind the arc, knocked down another shot. He had five points uh, in seven minutes. So I know they're mop-up minutes late in the game, but I'm always looking for kids that I don't care when you get an opportunity to play on the court in front of fans. I'm looking for kids that will go out there on the court and give it their all. And I certainly thought Harry Craig did that today. I thought Trey Shanaville did that today. So uh, a good performance from Trey, a good performance from Harry as, as guys coming off the bench and producing for this team. Uh, and, and outside of that, there wasn't a lot to, to be pleased about. Well, a couple of guys that didn't show up at all was Oreja and Kaplan. They just did not show up. And uh, I mean, I don't know why. Uh, but well, Corey, Corey only he only played a minute. He yeah. got a, got a couple of rebounds. He had a turnover, and I just we know we just didn't feel like he was focused, um, you know. And again, both of those guys, Ariza and Kaplan, uh, you know, we thought that, you know, that their effort in practice this week and their effort in shoot around today just didn't look like they were ready to play. They didn't look like they were hungry to play, and so we made a decision. You know, Mate is always hungry. Mate plays hard. He tries. He gives his best. He has great practices every day just from effort. Uh, and, you know, he's a young sophomore that's, you know, he's going to get better. So I gave him the nod today, and I started him. Um, he was two for three from the floor. His shooting percentages on the air are great because he hardly ever takes a bad shot. So Four rebounds. Yeah, he had four rebounds. And, you know, in his 14 minutes, he didn't do a bad job. I think Tampa played four guards. So it was a tough matchup to have Mate and, and RJ on the floor at the same time for extended minutes. Uh, and early in the game, a couple of those threes, you know, our bigs just couldn't get out there because they had four guards on the floor and we got two guys six eight or better. So it was, you know, uh, RJ and Mate do a real good job around the basket, clogging up the lane, taking up space and defending the bucket. But they're not the quickest guys in the world to get out to shooters, especially guards on the perimeter. Tampa started four guards out there and only one post player. Um, and so it was a tough matchup for us, Jim. But, again, we would have competed if we had put in more effort. So I, I'm disappointed by the lack of effort we put out there as a team today. Not as You know, we had a few individuals. Again, Derek Murphy played as hard as he possibly could. R.J. Coyle, I thought, rebounded well, defended well. You know, he gave in it four steals, you know, nine rebounds. R.J. gave us what you're going to get, and his effort was good. 
Um, I'd like to got some better looks for him. I'd like to got some more looks for him. Um, and Anthony's played hard. He just didn't just didn't put up any numbers today. He was our second leading rebounder, though. When you look back, you say, you know, Anthony's had six rebounds, and that was the third highest rebounding total of anybody in the game. Well, his numbers are awfully good. 18.6, 88% from the free throw line, six rebounds a game, and 44 from the threes. That's what he was until this game showed up. Yeah. Those are very good numbers. And, you know, he didn't didn't take enough shots to hurt those numbers, Jim. You know, he was 40% from the floor today. He only took three threes. He was four for four at the free throw line today. And he still got his six rebounds that he averages. The tough thing for him today, and had four turnovers in the game, Valor had three. You know, we had a boatload of turnovers. I mean, Tampa had 14 turnovers themselves. We had 18 turnovers. But, you know, I always like to look at the intangibles. And, you know, Tampa won every intangible. Well, sorry, they didn't win second chance points. And that's because they didn't get many second chances. They made most made of the first chances. Made everything they got. But uh, the points in the paint, Tampa outscored us 34-28. Points off turnovers, 20-9. to Fast break points, 16-7. to and some of those were just wide open layups and dunks off of turnovers. Uh, bench scoring, Tampa's bench outscored our bench 28 to 19. Uh, and then second chance, you know, we're pretty even seven to six in favor of us. Uh, we didn't get a lot of second chance points. Tampa didn't either, but you know, Tampa didn't need to because they made so many of their first shots. Well, we'll wrap it up here, Coach. Thank you, Jim. You've been here in uh, Tampa. I mean, uh, Tampa played well. Florida Tech's got a got about a week or so to get ready for the tournament ten, and then, 10 days but 10 we days. have we have exams next week so you give them a break there well we have no choice because the clemente center is set up for graduation starting wednesday of next week so we're back on the court tomorrow we're not taking a day off after a debacle like this so this was embarrassing i'm disappointed i'm embarrassed and all i can say is we're going to keep working to get our young kids better i mean again we're really young and i'm going to say this as disappointed as embarrassed as i am jim we got great kids. These are good people. I enjoy coaching these kids. Um, but that doesn't excuse the lack of effort that we got as a team today. We have to do a better job than that. And like I said, I, I, I still love coaching this team. But, you know, it's going to be a long season, Jim. You know, I know we, we might have fooled a few people, you know, when we had a five-game winning streak at the end of November. Because now we're playing conference play, and all of those teams are good. Maybe we even fooled ourselves a little bit. And some of our guys all of a sudden thought they were better than they are and we're better than we actually are. But, you know, it's a long haul in the Sunshine State Conference. And, you know, after a, a blowout like this, we're going to get no respect. Every team in the league is going to come after us with all they got and figure, hey, this is going to be a W. We got Florida Tech today. So we have to start really from scratch and working to, to compete every day. We have one of the youngest, if not the youngest, team that's in the league. And we have good young talent. We've got good young kids. We just got to get those kids to grow up a little faster, mature a little quicker. And I keep telling them, no one loss is going to be the difference in the season, you know, or one bad practice. We have to come out, and, and our goal is every day we take the floor to get a little bit better. We didn't get a lot better in practice yesterday because I thought it was a, not a very good practice going into a big home game. Uh, and I'm also disappointed that that – you know, we had two home games to start the conference slate. Now, they were tough games, two good teams, but we lost them both. And, you know, last year we talked about it. We were not very good at home, but last year we had the best road record. We won the most road games last year that we've ever won in the league, ever, ever, not just in my tenure, ever. So I don't know what it is lately. We used to be really good at home. We used to be really, really – my first 10 years here, I think we won 78% of our games in Clemente. So we were really, really good at home. Last year we struggled at home. This year we've started 0-2. And the disappointing thing to me is that now for the entire Christmas break, we're winless in the league and looking up at the rest of the league. Now, we got 18 more league games because we play 20 league games. Jim, it's a long season in a tough league. So we got a lot to play for, two losses. Hey, the team that wins this league is probably going to have more than two losses. Oh, yeah. So true. I'm not saying that we're in a position to win it right now, but the first two losses here are not going to be anything indicative. We just have to fix what we did wrong, 
get better at the things we're not doing well. And as I said, a young team has got to take the floor every single day and get better. We've got to get better every day. All right, we're closing it out, 99-69. Thank you, Jim. We'll see you next week.